Okay, welcome to the John Q Podcast, where we talk about all things related to pickleball gear and technology. I'm John, and I'm joined again by my good pal, Eddie. Eddie, how are you doing? Doing great, John. How are you? I'm doing good, once again. Just came off the court, and I'm kind of a sweaty mess, but uh, yeah. you'll deal with it, like <laughs> you, you know, always do. I think I talked about this on one of the takes we took of last week's podcast that didn't make it, because all the cameras are screwed. But uh, yeah, it's nice that I don't think either one of us are smelly <laughs> because we are in literally a confined little space with, with zero circulation like of air. Fifteen right? by yeah, fifteen by ten feet, uh, zero circulation, all padded walls. So yeah, thankfully, yeah, thankfully we, we're not disgusting. <laughs> so, <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, maybe I am, and I don't know it. So yeah. Good week last week. How was how was man? Yours? It has been so busy lately. Uh-huh. With uh, you know, I've got two kids. They're both graduating. One from college. One from high school. And with proms and finals and graduation ceremonies, it is bonkers. Yeah. How about you? Same, you got one, right? A little bit of bonkers with with graduation stuff going on this week. I have we have three boys in the house. Two of them are graduating this week, and one in two weeks. It's a weird schedule for. For Charlie, our youngest, but um, <clears throat> so it's a little bit mayhem there. Uh, in fact, Alec is graduating today. We've got to finish the podcast to make sure I get him off to his graduation ceremony and dance. But, um, but yeah, I also uh, entered a tournament last week at Lifetime. Uh, it was a local Lifetime uh, Superior Flat Irons uh, location, and they had a, a tournament there. Uh, Chris Fry, otherwise known as the Viking, and I teamed up for <laughs> I, men's doubles. I see him more as Aquaman than anything. But. Aquaman, <laughs> yeah, he's very large. I think he's six four at least. He's gigantic. Yeah, Two hundred twenty pounds, all muscle, and uh, uh, but gentle soul. Uh, so we get along well on the court, and uh, we entered men's four point five, and we uh, had a four two record. So uh, we did not make it to the to the medal matches. We were up four zero. We beat, beat our first four opponents. In and then, round robin, right? In round robin. Yeah. And our last round robin, uh, they're one game to 15. And we were up 8-0, eight, eight <clears throat> no, 8-1 on our opponents. And they just flipped the script on us, and they won 15-8. <laughs> like, they got 14 points in a row. And we were so <laughs> rattled by that game. Our next game, we totally bombed. Like, So was it something they were doing? Did they adjust, or did you guys just kind of? They just really, yeah, they adjusted, and they got really aggressive and kind of threw us off our game, and we got too cautious, like, uh. surprisingly. Like, you know, both, yeah. Anyway, so... <laughs> We played well for the first four games and first half of the fifth game, and then I mean four and poorly. two on the day is not bad yeah. for four or five. Yeah, would we you gotta, say it was actually four or five? Uh, I'd say between four oh four five. Okay, some of, there was one guy, um, Tam is that his name? Mm-hmm. He's he's five point one or something. He was he's nuts. He's so good. Yeah, and there are a couple of people over four or five, but yeah, it's a good good spread. It might it may have averaged on four point five. Yeah. Uh, so we did get into the playoffs, and then I lost, lost our first game in the single elimination playoffs. Okay. But, but uh, overall, we played played well. That was fun. Good. And then you and I, next weekend. Yeah, man. Uh, another four or fiver. Going to another another event, the PPA Dallas, which we talked about last week. And all of, all of us content creators, <laughs> even though you don't call yourself a content creator yet, Eddie, you're part of it. You're part of it now. I'm you're a creator stuck. wannabe. <laughs> So we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I look forward to meeting everybody. Yeah. And some manufacturers too, so that's good. Yeah. Speaking of manufacturers, uh, uh, Matt from Chorus sent us some hats, which you're wearing today. I did not put mine on, but uh, thanks, thank you, Matt, for the good stuff. The hats. And uh, I don't know if you could tell, but it's uh, it's like a black and green camo. Oh, the green too. Yeah. My colorblind eyes. Oh, that's so right. that is black and gray. But yeah, it's a sharp hat. Let's move on to the big news from last week when we kind of – Close the circle on the whole Yola fiasco. Uh, so, if you all watched the podcast last week, we had recorded one podcast and we had to throw it all away because the cameras were out of focus. The next day, we recorded a podcast and got it. And then the morning I was editing, the following morning I was editing that podcast, and then the big Yola news hit that they were that their Gen Three paddles were delisted on mm-hmm. the USAP approved paddle. Website and so we had to have an emergency meeting and, and you know kind of clip in some current news into the, <laughs> the the podcast. So that was a big podcasting week that we had last week. So we ended. It was kind of 
developing news as we were actually recording, and there were no statements made when we sat in here, and then a statement came out from Yola after, right after we were shutting down the camera, so I clipped that in as well. And at that point, the USAP hadn't even made any statement. Right. And then later that day, I think like over 24 hours after they delisted the Yola paddles, they actually made a statement too. Um, and, you know, it's not what probably what everybody was thinking. And I mentioned that last week in the podcast after Yola made their statement. It's kind of an admin error was what they chalked it up to. The USAP story was similar, although there was some kind of finger pointing back and forth. So the, Yola sta- the USAP statement said that, on May 14th and 15th, Yola informed them, USAP, mm. that Yola submitted the wrong paddles for certification in November of 2023. <clears throat> so then USAP delisted the paddles immediately without without notifying anybody <laughs> besides Yola, apparently. So they could really do better about you know <laughs> making a statement coincide with right. these big <clears throat> sweeping moves. Anyway, Yola released a statement right before that saying on May 15th, so they didn't even say May 14th and 15th. So that's the first, dis- first discrepancy. On May 15th, Yola was informed by USA Pickleball of their decision to remove Gen 3 paddles from the approved paddle list. So, I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle room in there. They, they may mm. it, the way they worded it, maybe that maybe they did inform USAP that they're, they submitted the wrong paddles. USAP informed Yola that they're going to you know, delist their paddles. There's still room for that to happen, but it sounds like they're both saying, hey, they told us, you know. Anyway... So what it sounds like happened, which is a really huge mistake, is that the wrong paddles were submitted to USAP for approval back in November 2023. And then the paddles that were actually approved were different. Now, Yola followed up and said, you know, in their statement that it's the same materials are confident that these new batch of paddles that they're sending in express will get approved. But... There had to be some differences or else they would never would have outed themselves. And I'm sure if they went to USAP with this information, they were thinking, oh, you know, same materials. Can we work something out? We not don't actually yank them off the list, but <laughs> they did it anyway. I'm sure Yola is not a fun place to be right now. So has anything happened in the in the week that's transpired since then? Uh, I mean, a lot of a lot of chatter on all the forums yeah. and and. But there's been no relisting. No, no, no relisting, right. and as far as I know, as of yet. Um, but Yola is confident it's going to happen quickly. There are some people out there that are like this is kind of you know a nothing thing, and people were making it out to be much bigger than it was. But it's pretty darn huge that the biggest paddle release of the year was just delisted yeah. uh, due to some administrative error. And USAP are notoriously slow with getting stuff done. So I'm sure Yola is pulling their hair, hair out right now. They have the most popular paddle out there, and people are definitely reluctant to buy it. I think a lot of people probably wanted a refund when they, they went off the USAP list. I was I was on the verge of maining the the Colin John Scorpius three or the Anna Scorpius three. I'd been playing with both for several weeks and doing doing well with them and I was gonna use them even though my first Colin John's broke. Now I'm it's not worth the not worth it. Yeah, you know? And I don't want I don't want just the, the public opinion of right. you using something like that. <clears throat> that's, that's even true. if it's even if the tournament has no problem with it. Yeah. And not that not that it's bad to use the Illogen threes. If you have one, go for it, use it. But just personally I don't want the focus to be on you know, the legality of my paddle or, yeah, or whatever, of course. you know. So how do you explain then uh, the paddle tech being delisted with presumably a similar, if not the exact <laughs> same, administrative error? Yeah, well... well that's, that's very coincidental. Very coincidental. I've also heard that maybe it never was on the USAP approved list to begin with. It was one of their newer paddles, and mm. there was a weird, a weird thing, uh, some back and forth with... Chris Olson and Paddle Tech that they were like, we don't really want to want to advertise this paddle because it's just so darn powerful. And <laughs> and I was like, are they reverse psychologying us? <laughs> you know, that's, could be. that's a good way to that's build a great some, marketing for <laughs> right. So uh, you, they, it could be possible that they never even got USAP approved. Who knows? But that seems to be completely unrelated. And the whole fiasco with with Yellow being taken off is. Completely unrelated to the, the hotness or the power of the paddle. It didn't fail deflection tests. 
It didn't fail the roughness tests, you know. So uh, for now, you're, we're <laughs> taking that at face value. The the administrative error. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to dig into conspiracy right. theories and or anything else. So, you know, we'll see. It, I'm not confident that it's going to be up next week. Maybe it will be back on the approved list, but I think it's going to take longer. I mean, look at what happened to, to carbon, you know, after the the grit gate stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's it's unfortunate for everybody. The players. USAP, YOLA, it's just kind of a fiasco. Have you heard uh, that YOLA is honoring refunds for people who just don't want to deal with all this? Uh, I've not heard. Okay. I'm sure YOLA will make it good. You know, it's just, just the way Carbon did when all this happened to them, they gave everybody, you know, a opportunity to get a new paddle, to trade in their old paddle yeah. for a new one, or, you know, take a refund for the next paddle. Um, yeah, anyway... Uh, they're Yola's big company, and they'll, they'll make it right. Uh, so sit tight while we're in limbo. Yeah, sit tight. And this also wasn't related to the 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 new coefficient of restitution exit velocity test that USAP did roll out. I was looking for the slides. I heard the slides were were out, uh, but I did not see them anywhere. Um, Carl from USAP did reach out to me last week. He sent me an email saying, "Hey, saw your podcast, enjoyed it." But, you know, there's a little bit of misinformation in the way you described what you thought our coefficient of restitution exit velocity test was going to be. And I described it as – I forget who told me this and, you know, uh, maybe I made it up. I don't know. But but uh, I thought the scatter plots everybody was talking about was the coefficient of restitution on one axis and deflection on the other. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. I think that's probably what he's trying to clear up. So maybe it's just coefficient of restitution. The way I've heard it described from from people who were at – this meeting uh, is that um, there's an average of so they are firing a ball with the cannon at 60 miles per hour at, at paddles stationary paddles I don't know how they're clamped yet that's an important thing right uh, and then they're me- measuring how fast the ball comes off so they know the known ball speed going in is known 60 miles per hour what's coming off is that they use a ratio of that to get the um, coefficient of restitution and I also heard that they're using a ball with no holes because the holes make the ball bounce all over the place, right? So if it bounces on the hole, it has a different response than bouncing in between the holes, which is kind of an inherent flaw of pickleball if you think about it, right? Mm. So um, anyway, I think they've got, you know, they, they see a bunch of paddles clustering on that coefficient of restitution. They're probably plotting speed in and speed out, right? on the two axes. So they're seeing, you know, that correlation and kind of the where the R squared lands and then there's going to be some outliers and then they're probably going to say, okay, within this range is legal, you know, at let's say 0.35 of the ball velocity coming in, that coming off the paddle, 0.35 to 0.55. I'm yeah. totally making up these numbers. I don't right. know if that's sure. so 35% to 50%. Well, presumably of the original speed, speed in really is irrelevant because it's a constant. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's curiosity to me. So let's say you fire the ball at 60 miles per hour and you get all of these data and then you turn around and fire the ball at 30 miles per hour and get data. Are those data going to be correlated or are they going to be one-to-one correlated? I don't think they will because, well, I was about to say my pop numbers and power numbers are different and those speeds are 55 to 60 miles per hour for, for power and 30 to 35 miles per hour for okay. pop. But I think – a lot of those differences, so those two aren't necessarily correlated in the same paddle. A lot of those differences are from the mechanics of the paddle. So a lot of the pop comes from lighter weight paddles with a low balance point, low swing weight that you're able to generate quick movements on. You know, they have a low hand speed index. And by virtue of being able to whip the, the paddle quickly, you're able to get more speed on the ball. So that's more paddle mechanics, weight weighting issue than it is materials on the face. But I don't think it is going to be, you know, even if you take that out of the equation, I don't think it's going to be a one-to-one correlation with different speeds coming into the paddle. But I think I think it's smart to do 60 miles per hour because with the stationary paddle, it's not going to come off at 60 miles per hour. It's not a one-to-one thing. It's going to sure. come off at a fraction of the, of the original speed. Like I imagine, you know, 20 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour is going to be the range. Or even less, the paddle. You know, paddles are meant to be pretty dead. <laughs> they have to be for, for USAP approval. Uh, anyway, so um, I think that's a good 
good idea to have it at 60 miles per hour because that's going to kind of be the average when you think about, okay, not all balls are coming at, at 60 miles per hour, but you're also swinging at the ball, so the ball is going to come off faster. So I think that's a good kind of middle ground speed-wise to test paddles with. So looking forward to talking with, with Carl at USAP and getting the lowdown. Maybe, maybe he'd want to come on the podcast, chat for a bit. Be great. Yeah. What are your other thoughts on this, Eddie, before we move on? No, I mean, I think that's a step in the right direction. You know, it's uh, what you and the other content creators do is great in terms of uh, your measurements of, of pop and power, but it's, it's still a relatively inexact science. For sure. Right, and so this just gets us another step in the right direction. Yeah, assuming that the method is, is sound. And, yeah. and one of the issues, you know, I've wanted for a while now to go to an automated system where, yeah, I'm firing a ball with a cannon at a stationary paddle. Sure. It takes out the human element, but but the more I've tried it, the more I realize that there are just so many variables to control. And taking the human element out for my purposes isn't the best choice because human element plays a big role in pickleball as well. And to replicate all of the the incredibly complex movements, you know, you know, the all the levers on the human body from the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist and, you know, twisting the core, all of that just has so much impact on the ball. And, and just, just for me, you know, simple tests like serving and, and punch volleys are the best to replicate and make, you know, make estimations on how a paddle performs sure. with some numbers. But, yeah, I would love to see what the re- final results are going to be out of this yeah. coefficient of restitution. And as we saw just an hour ago, there's there's even more factors at play, environmental factors and yeah. um, all kinds of things. So yeah, it's sure. uh, surfaces and you name it, and it's it's a, just another <clears throat> variable sort of confounding the the algorithm. Good stuff. Shall we move on to yeah? What's next? Other news. So we are also going to talk a bit about the PPA Atlanta Open, maybe quickly because we are short on time today. But, uh, but yeah, this one I think is worth talking about because it was a Grand Slam. So there's more PPA points awarded on this one. Uh, There are four of these Grand Slams per year. And there was some fun stuff going on. Uh, First of all, Annalie Waters was back. So no more free rides to (laughs) to Championship Sunday for for the women. Uh, Didn't seem to slow her down any. Did not slow her down. I think she was probably refreshed and and raring to go. So uh, the women's single final. Did you watch many many of these? No, 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 not too many. So the women's singles final was between Annalie Waters and Paris Todd, and that one, I I tuned into that and I was like, holy cow, this is a really really good match. It, it was such a battle. So Paris was up ten four in game one. She was just playing lights out, and then ALW in her typical fashion. She is a warrior, by the way. I I was at. You see it on TV too, but when you see it face to face and you can kind of focus in, you don't have to listen to the commentators and you you don't have to see the camera switching back and forth. I was in Dallas at the Nationals last year and I saw Annalie Waters defeat Catherine Parento in the in the singles final, and, and she just has this mindset. I mean, part of it is youth. You you know you have this this unearned confidence in your youth, you know, you just, and she has that in spades and she has the skill to back it up. So, so far she, she has unshakable doubt, un- unshakable uh, trust in herself. There's no doubt at all. And, and, and the way she thinks about herself. And I saw Catherine get up and Catherine got hot for a while and she was feeling very confident and Annalie Waters, you could just see her saying, saying to herself, no, no, no. And she goes and just turns it around as she always does, mostly does. And Catherine by the end was just, you know, I could see a lot of the emotions that I feel when I'm down in Catherine, you know, and it's just normal human emotions. You're like, God, I had this in the bag and now I'm screwing up. And, you know, I, I, you know, I know I'm going to miss this next shot. So there was none of that in Annalie and, 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 you know, Catherine was a human in that one. And Nath- Annalie Water still looks like somebody you should be able to beat pretty easily. <laughs> Doesn't she? She's not. <laughs> she is not. No, I know that. But it's it's yeah. you look at her and, and you think she still looks like a a kid, you know, yeah. a teenager, and right. you think I should be able to do this. And and even I mean, watch her play. It's a, you know she's amazing, but but uh, even watching her play, you're like. Mostly it's just see ball, hit ball as hard as you can. But it works out for her, right? <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> That's oversimplifying. She has amazing 
you know, IQ, court IQ, and but but on the appearance of it, you're just like, man, she just she swings. And there's not much finesse. It's all about you know overpowering the opponents, but and whew. just massive consistency. Consistency. You see her reset stuff. You know what you're seeing. You know the standout stuff is her hitting the ball hard. What you're not seeing is it's much, but it's happening a lot. It's her resetting every ball that's slammed at her and getting it back in the kitchen. So, yeah. Pretty incredible stuff. Anyway, Paris was up 10-4 in game one. ALW comes back, typical fashion, and wins it. Uh, Paris is up 6-0. This in is in the semis? Game two. This is a final gold medal gotcha. match for women's singles. And Annalie Waters comes back 10-8. But then Paris comes back and wins game two. And then Annalie won game three, 11-5. So mm. real kind of battle back and forth. There's a lot of fun to watch. I, you know, I much prefer watching women's pickleball to men's. I think it's so dynamic. I think what they do with uh, their twoies in particular, so fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, the consistency and the grinding. I don't know. I, it's it's more relatable to me than than men's doubles or men's singles. I agree. I think most people do agree. It, they they swing freely. They're not afraid to swing freely. Yeah, it so fun to watch. Very fun spectating. Uh, the men's singles final was Ben versus Fed. Ben's still got Fed's number, man. Fed, Fed can can beat up on most other people these days, but he he has an issue with Ben. And, and I watched it again, I, and I thought, it, okay, Ben's just in his head. You know, before I watched this last one, Ben's just in his head. He knows it's a game. Fed maybe caves a little bit. Fed brings out the best in Ben. Like Ben doesn't play anybody else as good as he plays Ben. It must be <laughs> infuriating. To Fed to play against Ben because he sees him play other people. And he's well, like, there's even I can beat that more guy. on the line this week. He, yeah, well, Ben's really good at stepping up to yeah. to pressure for sure. So is Fed, but Ben was playing out of his mind. Bet a couple of balls he got back, like he popped a ball up. They're both at the kitchen. Fed takes a full swing and hits it so hard he can't even see the ball. Ben dinks it back and resets the ball. <laughs> His paddle was just there. He knew exactly where it was going. It may yes. have been a stab in the dark, but he he knew exactly how to hold his paddle to make this 100-mile-an-hour overhead drop back into the kitchen. It was bananas. God. He did that twice during that game. What the neurons are doing to make that happen is just <laughs> sick. <laughs> so um, Ben wins in two games with that one. Uh, but and it's that just, puts him back in the number one spot. It does. And... The, this Vulcan ball, I don't know if it was just the Vulcan ball or some dead spots on the court. Probably just the Vulcan ball. I can't imagine center court having dead spots at this venue. But there was one ball. They were dinking back and forth, Fed and Ben, backhand to backhand. Fed gives Ben a sharp angle backhand. Ben runs to get it. The ball just rolls. It takes <laughs> almost zero bounce. It's just like dink, dink, dink. And Ben even laughed about it. I would be. Mm. horribly upset, but he was up, up at that point. He, he seemed in good spirits. That's the ball we got next week. That's the ball Better we got next week. It. Oh, good God. And I saw several instances of, of the Vulcan bounce. In last the Vulcan tournament. bounce, is that what we're calling it? <laughs> it's a thing, yep. <laughs> the VB. Yep. Nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much more I want to talk about these ones, but uh, so the women's doubles semis was between uh, Jade Kawamoto and Andrea Coop versus uh, Smith and, and Leah Jansen, right? And there was – I didn't realize the type of rivalry that that, that Leah and Andrea have. Mm. Yeah, but man, Leah – like Andrea's super nice and, you know, she's not chirping back, but but uh, – but Leah Jansen was chirping at Andrea the whole time. They did make a couple of bad line calls on on – so, so uh, Andrea, not on purpose, I'm sure, but there was one that she called out that, that on replay hit the sideline, but the I couldn't I can't remember. At some point in the game, they had to go inside because it started raining. And for some reason, when they were inside, they couldn't do a video review of, of line calls. So a couple of the points called against Leia were actually in. So she was she was fuming, but that brings up the point, you know, when. Is it time for us to stop having pros call their own lines? No. It was a year ago. Two years, <laughs> years ago. ago. <laughs> that and why are we using 120 pr- frames per, per second on the cameras when 240 frames per second is available, readily available? I mean, I, I have it in a GoPro right now. Sick four of those cameras on each line. And, I mean, that would make things 
so much better. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, even if you had line judges, they make errors too. They're human. But that would, you know, when you're in the heat of the battle, that's just one more layer that you don't need to be thinking about. And people are naturally going to make mistakes because they want to see that ball out. And if it's if you're looking down on it, it's hard to see exactly where it is, especially when you're running, your head shaking. And no two people have the same perspective on the ball. <laughs> no. The angles are different. And if you see it, I've, you know, if you see it and if you're at the pro level and money's on the line, then of course you're going to you're going to call it in your favor. Even if you you know, not necessarily if you know that it's in, but if you're like I'm I can't tell if that ball is in there. I'm going to call it out, right? Yeah, and the faster these balls go with these new paddles, the, the harder some of those calls are. I mm. mean, if the ball's going by at 60, 65 miles an hour, right. forget it. Yeah. If you're standing right over it, no way. For sure, for sure. No way. So, yeah, the time has already passed, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, other big news in the tournament. So the Johns brothers are they're not, not having, too good. They're not having a good streak no. this year. Uh, but you know what? I, I think Ben has taken it. Better possibly than than Colin. I think it almost maybe I'm just reading into this, but it almost seems like Ben is just like it's kind of nice not to be on top. You know the Damocles sword thing, right? People are coming after you all the time, and he's he's still the number one rated overall. But I think he's, it's just kind of like God. This kind of feels good to kind of I don't know. I'm I'm definitely reading into it. Anyway, yeah, the Johns brothers uh, got beat by. <laughs> Federico Staxrud and Matt Wright. Oh, Matt Wright, yeah. Not even in the quarters of the semis, you know. And um, they beat him in two. It wasn't even close. 11-5, 11-3. It was nuts. Yeah, they just could not get anything. And, you know, Matt was chirping and he was doing his speed up on every mm. everything. You know, so Matt Wright's a contender, man. He's still a contender. And then the Johns Brothers actually played the bronze medal match. They usually just take off if they... They don't make it into the final Sunday. So they played bronze, and they lost to uh, Tyson McGuffin and Deco Barr. Rough. They had a rough go of it. But Ben came back with Annalie Waters and did get gold in championship Sunday on mixed doubles. They beat uh, Anna Bright and James Ignatowicz in four. But that was a crazy game, too, because Ben and Anna beat them handily in games one and two. Game three, <laughs> James and Anna pickled Ben and Anna Lee. <laughs> 11 0. They could not get anything going. Yeah. And what was the reaction of uh, Anna Lee and Ben on that one? Uh, just business, like, we'll yeah. just take care of it on the business next one. as usual. Yep. And then it came back, you know, <laughs> came back and won the next game handily. So, kind of a wild tournament. It was it was good to see everybody I think back. We're going to see those four on the court again. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think, I don't know what their doubles ranking is, but I think Anna and James are, are going to be the. If not already, the biggest contenders for I would say so. Ben and Anna Lee. Okay, shall we? Let's move on. Let's move on. So last week we had a poll. I put up a poll on my website, johnqpickleball.com, asking which is which paddle would you like me to review next? And there were five options. And it was of course Shapeshifter, uh, Honolulu Pickleball Company, Sword and Shield J2K, their Kevlar version, mm-hmm. the Spartus Apollo, mm-hmm. another Kevlar. Wide body paddle, uh, the Babylon paddles, uh, the Striker Baller Wizard, or the eleven six twenty four Hirache X Control. There, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Did their it. Kevlar paddle. I, I every time I look at their naming for the eleven six twenty fours paddles, I I laugh because there's just like random. I can't do it X's without looking at it. Uh, like control doesn't mean what and the plus. think it means, and there are pluses and X's and, and multiple Hiraches. <laughs> Uh, I think he's just having a good time. Great product. <laughs> he's, just, he's just trolling everybody. Right? Yeah, <laughs> the skews are all over. He's, he's doubling down on on the bad names. Um, anyway, so announced the <laughs> announced the poll last week in a podcast. Uh, a couple days in, I looked and there were like three thousand responses. I'm like, oh, this is That's, a popular poll. Yeah, and. About a week into the poll, I was like, there are 5,000 responses to this? The fan base has just gone nuts. <laughs> and then I started, <laughs> so I got in, it was Survey Monkey was the poll I used. And then I got in, I had to, to buy the upgraded plan because there were so many darn responses. And uh, you can drill down into all the metadata and, and you can look at IP addresses. And it was pretty clear that there were bots involved. So At least one. Uh, yeah, more than one. Okay, so, more than one. Yeah. Uh, 
too funny. And I think they were super fans. I don't think it was the companies doing this. Uh, you know, I saw a lot of kind of chatter on in the comments, like, "Hey, I think Spartus is going to win." There was there was a lot of bots for Spartus, uh, a couple of bots I think for for Chorus, uh, and it was like I think a couple of super fans were like battling between Chorus and Spartus. Uh, so the last count I looked this morning, it was like 13,500 <laughs> responses. And I just upload the data to Excel, and then there's a really quick, quick filter where you, right. where you eliminate duplicate IP addresses. And I save the, the one IP address. You know, if, if somebody voted twice or three times, you know, I, I deleted the two or three duplicates that kept their original vote, right? So anyway, the winner, for, that brought it down to just under 2,000 votes, which is pretty pretty good. That's a pretty good response. That, that's excellent, actually. Yeah. So the winner, drumroll, please, of this week's, uh, of, of our poll for the best, the next paddle review is the Honolulu Pickleball Company Sword okay. and Shield J2K. J2K. And they won by pretty large margins. That, so they got just over 35% of the votes. And Chorus Shapeshifter, congrats to them, too. They got came in second at about 23%. Spartus Apollo came in third, Hirachi X Control fourth, and Babylon Pedals came in fifth. So really good response. I, I do like these polls. I may have to keep my subscription to yeah, Survey Monkey let's do it. and keep polling people because, wow, that's a really good response. Next time I'm going to make sure that <laughs> – I'm going to close down the option to, to vote more than once so that bots that's are That's great involved. to have the engagement though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So uh, the next full length review will be of tomorrow. No, <laughs> we, I've got to hit this, <laughs> this paddle for more than a few games. So I'll you know, spend a couple of weeks with hitting the paddle, and oh, then, it's a great paddle. Yeah, run the metrics, and I talked to Jam at Honolulu. Uh, he's he's stoked. He's going to send a couple more paddles, new paddles for B roll because the paddles we have are all banged up from playing. Yeah, we, yeah, we've put them through the ringer. Yeah, already. But so. the J two K is. One of my favorites. It's a contender. Yeah. Yeah. Nice plush feel. It's got the 100% DuPont Kevlar. Uh, feels similar to the 6 Zero Ruby, but there's some distinguishing characteristics also. You know, John, I think for this video specifically, you need to go to the site of its creation. We should both go. <laughs> I think a pilgrimage is in order. <laughs> exactly. To Honolulu. My Speedo is packed. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking surfboards, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to wear a Speedo. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, yeah, that, that'd be nice. I'm sure Jam would love to host us. He seems like a super cool guy, owner of awesome. Honolulu. So that's going to be fun. I'm and a convert. You know, I, did, I wasn't a fan of their first couple releases, uh -huh. their elongated paddles, but these new Kevlar versions are, man, they're good. I agree. And I'm also going to do a review of the Core Shapeshifter because I do love that paddle. It's a good one, too. Yeah. So I'll review the top two. I'll do the Sword and Shield first since they won the poll. Nice. So this this week, Eddie, we had a chance to hit around with the new Selkirk Amped Pro Air. So uh, I got two shapes from Selkirk. I got the Epic and the Invicta. Uh, so the Invicta is the elongated, and the Epic is a standard shape. And they are here behind us. Um, and... Basically, here, I'll put these here. Basically, there are 16 millimeter versions of the Power Air, which was a, a thinner uh, thinner paddle with the same kind of idea. So it's, it's grit texture. It's got the throat hole mm -hmm. or aerodynamic. Um, that's, the, that's the goal anyway. Actually, I whiffed really hard on a ball today, and it actually made a whoosh sound. You, you hit Is a, that what that was? You hit a drive, and I was, I was going to like sneak you up air and slap it. it. Whoosh. <laughs> it did not even hit the ball, but I was like, oh, that, that hole does, does something. It has, right. a, has a sound effect. But yeah, so we got a chance to hit around with these. But first I want to say, Selkirk still has not given me influencer status. So to get a, a code with Selkirk, I have no code with Selkirk yet. Well, what does it take to be an influencer? <laughs> so, not that I think I'm a big deal or anything, but, but you know, every other paddle reviewer that I know has, a, has an influencer status and a code with Selkirk, and I've been in communication with them, super nice people, but they're like, hey, submit your application here, and we'll get back to you. <laughs> I submitted an application like a year ago. Right, I remember that. Six months ago, I got back to them, and I'm like, yeah, we're still considering it. So, I don't have a code for you. If you do like this paddle, use Pickleball Will, 
Chris Olsen, Braden. Here's one of their – they're readily available. What do they but, got that you don't have, John? But – Followers? Please write them an email and say, <laughs> if you want, if you think I should be a – you know, have the influencer status with Selkirk, mention me in the email. Say, hey, I saw this – Yeah. Saw this paddle on John Q's podcast. I want to no, buy seriously, it. seriously. Is it about followers? No. I, I, I have no idea what it's about. No. Oh. But uh, – yeah, I'm a little salty about that. I can tell. <laughs> but they sent you these, right? They, they send me stuff if okay. I ask for it, right. but they won't give me a code for, for discount. Mostly I want to provide a discount for people. To, right, to, sure. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's not a discount. It's like a, it's like a gift certificate for other stuff, but, but I want to incentivize people to buy their paddles if, if they think they're good. And Come on, Selkirk, get on it. Get on it, Selkirk. All right, so my thoughts on, the, on this paddle is – Completely I was just going to say, you sound a little biased, John. <laughs> What's going so, on? So Maybe me, I should take it from here. Let me preface this. Right. Yeah, let, let, me, let me ask you first. Actually, I would like to hear from, from you first. So we hit, hit around these today. I, I did run the, the numbers and the specs. Uh, I do want to say that the, the numbers look good. So the spin is pretty outstanding on these. The spin felt the, good. Yeah, the spin, especially on the Epic, so the standard shape, it was right up around 2,300 RPM on was average. It that high? Okay. Yeah, which is top of the top tier. Uh, the Invicta got a, a little less spin, but I think it was around 21, 2,200. Both are getting actually a spin. We, we saw that today playing with them, you know, dipping the ball super hard. So that's good. Uh, caveat there is it's grit applied texture. It does tend to wear out quicker than raw textures. Uh, secondly, the twist weight is, is better on these than on the power airs. So probably mostly related to the thicker core, 16 millimeter core rather than the 13 or whatever they were using on the power airs. Uh, and I think they did, you know, they were a little more forgiving in terms I would say so. of that because of the added twist weight on both of these. So I think the twist weight on the, on the standard shape Epic is 7.8. Zero one, just over seven, and for the Invicta, I can't recall, but it was up upper fives, lower sixes, somewhere around there. So, uh, and one more good thing I want to mention on these is the grips. They feel like like sheepskin, almost like a really soft, plush, fake leather. I, maybe this is new. Does, I haven't felt this on Selkirk pedals. I didn't notice that. But uh, yeah, the the grip is no, nice it is and a little, soft. It's soft and, yeah. yeah, but you could feel the hardness under there, which is I think is a great combination. Yeah, because you don't want squishy under your squishy. You don't want squishy under your squishy. <laughs> so there's no exposed polymer. These are you know molded edgeless thermoformed paddles with edge foam and all the works. So let's get your thoughts, Eddie. Uh, we we both played some singles, skinny singles games with these, drilled with these. What are your thoughts? Yeah, knowing its history as uh, the power air previously, I was expecting power, and I got power. Uh, serves were, man, really strong, as were drives. Um, on the other hand, I was having a hard time just feeling like confident with resets uh, and the control game. Mm -hmm. um, I was having a hard time. These paddles feel thin when you hit the ball. There, There isn't that sort of... Um, firmness that you get from uh, a lot of the thermoform Gen Two paddles, like denseness. Yeah, okay. It, it yeah. feels very thin, like mm -hmm. like they're 100 percent made out of plastic. And I don't know if I wasn't hitting the sweet spot or if that's what I was feeling, but it just did not feel great um, in that control sense. Mm -hmm. um, Part of that's probably related to the fact that it is not a carbon fiber surface; it's yeah. it's all fiberglass. Okay, yeah. So there's your power for you. Yeah. Um, normally, with a you know a standard shape paddle, it, the sweet spot is about the same size in area. It's just kind of shaped differently. I felt like the sweet spot on this Epic was actually smaller in area than the Invicta. Mm. I, I felt like it was uh, a little bit easier to find on this Invicta shape. Mm. And I don't normally say that about elongated paddles versus a a more traditional shape paddle. Very interesting. Yeah. I agree with everything except the, the sweet spot comparison. Um, I, I was having a much easier time finding the sweet spot on the Epic. It, just, it was wider for me. Uh, and, yeah, I was hitting – off-center shots on the, on the Invicta were dead for me. You know, I, I was having flashbacks to my old power air days. I tried that paddle as my main for a few weeks, and it just didn't work out. And that was last year at some point. Uh, but overall – I would I would say that the the metrics don't lie. They're, they definitely play more forgiving, and they're better options. I would agree in with my that. opinion. I would agree with that. The power airs. The sweet spot, you know, getting more into that. I I feel like 
it, it almost feels like the sweet spot is a cylinder on here. Mm -hmm. And where you miss the edge of the cylinder, you get nothing versus sort of a gently sloping hill. Yeah. And so yeah, I was struggling too with those shots where I was just a little bit off that the middle and it just – there's nothing. Yeah, several shots when we were playing skinny singles on both of our – off of both of our paddles. You know, I'd reach for a shot and it would – normally with another paddle, it might go over the net. It might hit the net cord. This one hit the bottom of the net. You know? right. It's just – there's no response off the paddle outside of that sweet spot. And just like – an inch or two yeah. outside of that sweet spot, dead. And I totally agree with your feeling that they don't feel like 16, mil 16 millimeter paddles. Some of that's because they're edgeless. Some edge weight would help. But the issue with the edge weight is they're, they're not light swing weights already. The, the Invicta is 121, I think. And then the, the Epic is, is better. I think it's 113 or something like that. But at those swing weights, there's not a lot of room to add right. perimeter weighting yeah. already. More so with the Epic, you can you can add some weight there. I think I think the Epic, if you add some some weight, two three out two three grams at four and eight, that I think that would really shore up some of the twisting and the deadness you feel off center. But the Invicta, I think you're kind of stuck with its stock, or unless you're really tolerant of high swing weight paddles. It, the, that number surprises me. It, it, it felt heavy, mm -hmm. but didn't feel quite that heavy. I would yeah. have guessed maybe 119, yeah. 120, would, something in I'll there. I'll go back and look. Maybe I, I, I feel like it is 121, but if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll list it in the show. What uh, are your metrics on power for these? So, yeah, good, good point. I would say the Invicta has decent power. Uh, that's one issue I had with the power air. It did not feel powerful in the way that I define power as the full swings, mm -hmm. like serves and drives, and, and put away power. It felt okay there, but all the power in the power air was from pop. pop. So it was really good, nice and poppy at the kitchen. You know, those short strokes generated a lot of velocity. But this one I felt was better balanced. It had decent power from the baseline with full swings, and the pop was, was still there. Maybe not quite as— That's exactly not, how I would say it. Okay. I'd, I'd say it's the pop is still comparable to the the power air, uh, and then with the, that was the Invicta shape, and then with the Epic shape, their standard one uh, it was similar. You know, I didn't have as much power from the baseline as I did with the Invicta, but the trade off with that is there's better hand speed at the kitchen, and you're able to generate more pop with it, and and just you know, get the paddle into position quicker and, and be ready for hand exchanges at the kitchen. And there was better control with the Epic, for sure. I had a much easier time getting through the transition zone with the Epic. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I would say if you like the power air, but you felt like you wanted just a smidge more control mm -hmm. and maybe a little less pop, this would be a good good match. Yeah. yeah but if you're sure. a 003 or Lux user and you're looking for a little bit more power, this will give you the power, but I think you'll just lose too much control. Yeah, good assessment. Uh, you know, I think, and I think they're 180 bucks too, so they're on the cheaper side for Selkirk's, mm -hmm. you know, pro paddles. Um, I think it's a decent option out there. I, I would, I would not say the sweet spots are comparable to most of the other Gen yeah. Two paddles out there. You know, I think they're they're smaller, larger than the Power Airs, but smaller than most Gen Twos. Agree. But decent options, you know, if you're a Selkirk fan, you you know, this is a good option for you, especially if you play with the power air and you, like you said, you just want a little more control and, and you know, a little more power uh, from these, not necessarily more pop, but, but yeah, I think it's a better balanced paddle, suits most, more people better than their power air and coming in at a decent price point. What do you think of the, the color scheme? I, I do like the colors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like it, but it's probably not <laughs> kosher to play with that in a tournament or on a pickleball oh, This court. lime green? The lime green, yeah, because it looks too much like a ball. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I'm okay with it. I like the red one. It's, I don't think you have it here, but no. from what I've seen online, I, I like the red color. This blue one's nice, too. I enjoyed that one. I was going to say something else about these, but uh, lost it. And these are the only two shapes? Yes, the only okay. two shapes right now. Gotcha. Right. What's next? Oh, we did play a, a, a few points with the Gamma Library Ball. Today. That was crazy. <laughs> that was, it was nuts. The Actually, kind of fun. It was I, a I lot of fun. With we it. had a lot of chuckles on the court. No t pun intended with the Gamma Chuck Ball, but <laughs> but uh, 
The dip on those, like, you could serve, like, almost as hard as you can swing. Yeah. And you put enough top spin on that thing, that thing's going to dip in. And, yeah, like, there are a few points where I was just lobbing it from the baseline into fence, and you were <laughs> slamming it, and I was diving for it and lobbing it again. And then I got to the net, and then you were doing I was lo- you were I lobbing it. I wish we had that on video. Yeah, that, that was so fun. That was a nutty point. And on defense, you just put your paddle out and let the ball touch it, and the, you know, the, the, the uh, springiness in the ball will do, mm. do all the work yeah. for you. You don't have for to sure. do anything. And it, and it's, it, uh, you can just reset those things like easy. The ball, it's springy too, so it does add some velocity to the ball, but it also snuck up onto you due to acoustics because you're so used to <laughs> exactly. being able to determine how fast the ball is coming by the sound of the ball coming out the paddle. And this one's just, right. you can't hear the ball, and it's, you're like, oh, this is coming. So oh, it's right in my face, right? So. It is a lot of fun. I'll give yeah. it that. Yeah. It's worth keeping in the bag just for that. And then somebody came up and was like, are you playing with a tennis ball? Is that your, your high wind option? <laughs> um, shout out to Zach. That was his name, right? Yeah, Zach. Yeah. He rec- recognized us from the podcast. Did you see those two girls playing in the the court next to him? Uh-huh. Their paddles must have cost about $10. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that that'll be a, a future podcast I can't episode. Wait. Yeah, I, I, this was your idea too. You, you're a man of ideas, Eddie. But you thought of going to the big box stores and buying some beginner paddle sets or just you know budget paddles from. I've seen some decent options out there. I have too. So I, I started buying some yesterday. Went to Costco and I was okay. like, okay, I'll buy that that Selkirk set. So Selkirk has a two paddle set with a ball for sixty nine bucks. From their or SLK line, it's their okay. SLK. Yeah. And that felt pretty gritty. That one might be a, a good option. And then I went to Target next door. I bought, they had a wide selection. I didn't get any of the Yolas. They have, Yolas have several entry level right. models. Yep. Uh, I got a, oh, I forgot. Frankly? I got a couple of paddles, paddles from there. I'm going to order a okay. few others. And nice. We'll, I'll run the metrics on them. And we'll play with them and, and, you know, give our opinion on which That'll is the be best. That'll be fun. Yeah. Which is the best. Sub fifty dollar. Yeah. So paddle. if you've seen anything out there in the big box stores that we haven't talked about, let us know, and we'll yeah, see what we can do to do. add it into yeah. our evaluation. Leave some comments for us. Yeah, yeah. But those two paddles that those girls are using, they were just straight plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. I mean, they were having fun. I, you know, that reminded me of myself when I first started playing pickleball, kind of standing on one foot and tapping everything overhead. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they were definitely having a good time. They were saying like, "Oh, by the end of the summer, we're gonna we're gonna be all over this." They court. got the bug. They got yeah. the bug. And uh-huh. It happens to everybody. Them. You see yourself going pro in like a year, right? <laughs> Doesn't look that hard. <laughs> look at Italy Waters. <laughs> she's, she's no athlete, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the hook. That's the hook of pickleball. Mm-hmm. Well, let's move on to Q and A, shall we? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Eddie, can you read us the question? <laughs> yeah, this is from uh, I guess last week's. Uh, Podcast, podcast yes. thir- 14. Exactly. This is from Pickleball Mike 509. Is Eddie Will's dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. So, uh, before you answer, maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got spawn all over the place. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Can't say definitively. So, can you read the uh, re- one of the replies to that also? Yes. Uh, let's see. Sam- uh, let's see. If Chris and Eddie had a baby, it would look just like Will. <laughs> My goodness. So I clipped, I just screenshotted this and sent it to, to Will and Chris. And I said, man, people talk about some weird stuff. <laughs> Will, Chris, and Braden, we have this group chat going. And they all they both laughed. And, and like Chris's response was like, what in the world? And then like 10 minutes later, Braden was like, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> we all laughed at that. Personally, I don't see it. And, but, then, uh, and then, and then, and uh, then, <laughs> And then Will sent a picture. He's like, actually, Eddie does resemble my dad. And Will sent a picture of his dad. So oh, I have not showed, shown you these pictures. No, yet. No. Do you want to get a live response of? I'm not sure I want to see this. <laughs> whether or not. This is like the worst unboxing ever. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, you never look like what people think you look like, right? Okay. Like, you're like, every time somebody's like, God. your doppelganger is this guy. I'm like, that guy? I look nothing like that guy. So uh, I don't think you look like Will's dad. But I'm going to send you these Photos. All right. All right. So you've got your iPhone ready? Yeah. All right. You're going to airdrop it. Do you need to approve the permission to airdrop? I got approval from Will to show these pictures. This is a young Will, by the way. He kind of looks like Chris in this picture. (laughs) They get that all the time. And I'm like, you guys look nothing alike. But I can kind of see it in a young 
will that he right. bears a resemblance sh- to Chris. I should be good now. Incoming. Oh, John, you sent me pictures of you in a Speedo. <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong. You already t-shirt. had those in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where is it? Come on. Oh, here we go. Oh, you sent it in the text message. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it. Looks, I don't know. It looks more like my dad than me, but. Okay. I got another one here. This is a more recent one. All right. It's not a fun game, by the way. Not a fun game. No. <laughs> uh, you'll get me back, I'm sure. Is that Will's sister? Oh, it could be. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, maybe his girlfriend at the time? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Will. <laughs> One of those answers is going to piss him off. All right, I don't see it, but maybe you could put those on the. Uh, I will put them on on the the pod and let let B-roll. people make a make their own decision. Do you think that Will's dad resembles Eddie? Oh my! God. I don't see it. Honestly, oh I don't. I don't either. Yeah, I think I'm much better looking. Sorry, Will's dad. All right. Do you think the first picture of Will looks more like Chris than Will's dad looks like Eddie? I would vote yes on. Oh that. my gosh, yes. <laughs> that that could be Chris. If you told me that was Chris, I would believe it. Thank you. There you go. All right. I think the takeaway is that Braden needs a, a small Asian sidekick <laughs> on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could, you could join like him. thing to do. You should join him as a co-host for one of his episodes. Oh, no, he's got to get his one. own. Just one. You found yours. He can get his. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> This is taking a weird turn. <laughs> this is, yeah. I enjoy it, though. This, is, this yeah. has been fun. Any other questions? <laughs> That's all. Did you had another one you kind of wanted to answer. I think it was about the gearbox and the and how how that escaped delisting when the others did not. We, and we addressed right. that. Yeah, we addressed it. So it, it was the the issue was not with Yola's power of the Gen 3, so or their deflection or the grid or coefficient of restitution. Yeah. It was entirely an administrative issue. So gearbox is still legal. You're good to go. All right. Although it's been a while since I've picked that one up. I should revisit that. Yeah. The Pro Power. Uh, you know, the last time I played with that, I did not have a good time with it. <laughs> you were, you were hitting the back wall. I could not keep the ball in at all. Oink. Yeah. <laughs> it was gone. I was like, holy cow, this is more powerful than I remember it and totally uncontrollable yeah. for me. Our lifetime has the, the back wall, and just above that, there's a hallway where the kids are walking to daycare, <laughs> and I kind of feared for their lives, <laughs> like poor their little ones. Diving for shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Yeah. All right. Uh, I've got no gear of the week, no deep dives to talk about. Um, I think we've we've covered most of the things, and we're at about an hour now, so now it's a good time to call it. Sounds good to me. We will see you next week. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, John. Thanks, Eddie.